All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're going to do an example problem using F equals MA with normal and tangential components. And what we have here is, you know, I made this really official. I even typed up the problem statement and drew a graph using MathCAD. Oh, snap. You know what I'm saying? And I've got this mass. Uh, a box that weighs 10 kilograms, which is about 20 pounds, and it's sliding down a frictionless curve ramp. That ramp is described or has a, a path that's y equal to 0.4x squared. And we're going to say that the units here are going to output in meters. So that constant of 0.4 meters has, has some units that will result in meters. Uh, when we pl plug it in and same with X, X is also in meters and Y is in meters. Anyway, they're all just distances. So no big deal at the instant shown when X equals two meters right here, this is X equals two meters. What we have is we know the speed of the box is five meters per second. So it's going down the ramp. It's got a velocity here that's tangent to the path at five meters per second. Boom, like this. All right, and what I want to do is I want to determine the magnitude of the acceleration of the box and the normal force acting on the box. Anyway, if you're here in this channel and you're new, I hope you'll subscribe, like, and share the videos that I'm creating. It helps me help you. You know what I'm saying? All right, so the first thing that we want to do in these types of problems is to draw a schematic or an FBD. One thing I like to do is I want to draw an external free body diagram as well as the inertial diagram. And for me, that means I'm going to focus on this box here. I'm going to set this equal to, so this, this left side will be my external force diagram drawing. And then on the right side will be my inertial diagram drawing. And all I do is just redraw the exact same particle that I had before, ideally in the same size that it was in before as well, right here. All right. So I have, I basically draw the particle twice. And then what I want to do is establish the positive directions of the normal and tangential components. So my approach here in the schematic, I'll just do a quick little summary here. And in this schematic, I want to establish positive senses of the coordinate system that I'm using. And so here in this one, um, I'm going to use normal and tangential components because I'm moving down a curved path here. I know that my tangential component is parallel to the velocity vector at this instant or tangent to the path. So boom, this will be my plus t direction like this and my normal direction is 90 degrees to that tangential component towards the center of curvature and so here oh let me use my ruler all right yo that looks pretty good that looks pretty good right there i'm gonna draw boom like that yes and this will be my plus n direction my normal direction and i'll draw the exact same coordinate systems on my on my inertial diagram in the tangential and normal directions plus n plus t not as clean you know what i'm saying but still worthy of what we're doing here and then what i want to do is you know identify forces external forces on the left side and write in the inertial di inertial components or the inertial terms on the right the inertial terms are probably the easiest part and what i would do here is say oh Oh, okay, uh, I have the inertial term. I'm always going to draw it in the positive sense. So here, M A T, and then here, M A N, like this. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, and now that's the inertial side. It doesn't matter which one you decide to do first. And now I want to look at the forces or the external forces acting on my particle. And in this case, I have a a, uh, the weight of the particle, so which will be straight up and down. Yes, like this. I'll call this the weight of the box. I'll go WB like that. And then here, normal to the path. So in the N direction, I have a normal component, the normal force acting on the box like this. And because it's frictionless, that's all I have in this problem. All right, so, so not too bad. Uh, so I have only these two external forces acting on the problem in this case. And once I have this diagram, well, Shoot, all that's left for what, what's next for me is to really write the equations of motion. So two, I want to write the equations of motion. And they can be called 
many things, right? They could be called dynamic equilibrium, Newton's second law, right? But they, you know, I like to call them the, them the equations of motion. And here, which is really just, we're gonna apply F equals MA. Uh, it's a vector equation. So we're gonna look at it in two components. And so here, check this out. I've got positive T, so I can, Choose which one you want to look at first. So either choose the tangential direction or the normal direction. I'm going to choose the normal direction first. So here uh, I will go pop plus n is this way. And I'm going to write the equation of motion, which, which just means I'm going sum of the forces in the n equals man. And this equation will be, hmm, let's see here. Well, you know what? I'm gonna need some angles to make this thing work out, okay? And um, let's see here, I think it'll help me. So one of the biggest challenges is not necessarily writing the equations of motion, but figuring out what is the, what are the angles that are appropriate in this problem? So to make my drawing a little bit clearer, I'm gonna erase this five meter per second there. And then I'm gonna draw, what I like to do if I'm not sure about the, um, the angles is I like to draw a horizontal and a vertical line through the center of the particle. And then what I wanna do is uh, I will establish or select one of those angles. So in this case here, uh, I will say that this angle right here, I'll say that is theta. And because the dotted line here for the tangential and the dotted line for the normal is 90 degrees, then I know this angle is 90 minus theta. And this angle here is also theta because that you know the two vertical the vertical blue and the ver and the horizontal blue also make 90 degrees right and it's being split by that normal component direction all right so that that tells me oh yeah that's the theta direction right there that is the angle theta right there and so i can i don't i might not know what that angle theta is yet but i can at least write my equations of motion in terms of that angle theta and so here i would say yo this, I'm going to break up WB into its components in the normal and tangential direction. So here, this would be the tangential, and then this would be the normal right there. Do you, yeah, you all see that? Good, 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 good. So here, I'm focused on, for the, in the normal direction, I'm focused on this component right here. Yes, and that would be negative WB cosine of theta, like this. And then I look at my, the other force that's acting in that normal direction would be plus NB equals, and I think those are all the external forces, and then it's equal to the inertial term, which is MAN. And that is my equation of motion in the normal direction. Then I, I would challenge you right now, see if you can pause and take a minute, maybe even 30 seconds, see if you can write the tangential component, okay? and. If you pause and you've done it, then here, check this out, in the tangential direction, this is the plus T orientation, and sum of the forces in the T is equal to MAT, like this, and the tangential component, I would have W for the weight, I want that, that component parallel to the tangential direction, so there'd be WB sine theta, equals mat like this and so what i have right now are two equations i'll number this one number one and this one number two like that let's see what i do know and what i don't know so i was given the mass of the box which is 10 kilograms so that means i do know the weight of the box yay all right so that if in case you don't know wb is equal to the mass times gravity so no big deal there all right Hmm, I don't know this angle theta, so I'll put a rectangle around that. Uh, the normal force is something I'm trying to solve for. Yes, okay. Let's see, I know the mass of the box, great. Do I know AN? Well, in a way I do know AN, the normal component, because it's really just a definition. And so here, AN is the velocity squared over the radius of curvature. But shoot, I see some problems here. I know the velocity, it's five meters per second down the ramp. I just don't know the radius of curvature at this point. So you know what, I'm gonna give myself another unknown here. I'll put this as a triangle like that, uh, that triangle unknown. And so in fact, I'll say AN is technically unknown, 
So I'll put this as a triangle unknown like this. And let's see, uh, theta, I, in the next line, I know the weight, yes. I, I don't know theta, the angle theta. Uh, I do know the mass, and yikes, I still don't know AT. And that's also something I need to solve for. Goodness, but I do know that AT, from definition, from particle kinematics, is just dv dt along the path. So the idea that if I look in the tangential direction, it's in a curved motion, it's like, it's as if it's 1D motion, right? And that's like the power of our uh, normal and tangential components. Freaking awesome, you know what I'm saying? So let's start, let's see here. Let's work on some geometry. I think we can figure out some things by geometry. Let's go ahead and determine that angle theta first, right? And the angle theta right here, hmm, I have this angle theta, and the tangent line is parallel or is the slope of the path at that instant. And another way to express the slope is the derivative dy dx, like this. And if I know that, oh, let me write this, y is 0.4x squared, then dy dx is, well, it's just a, a derivative with respect to x, is 0.8x. Hey, no big deal right there. And at x equals 2 meters, the slope is 1.6. And more importantly, it's a ratio of 1.6 to 1. Rise over run. Okay? And what that means geometrically is that when I go across 1, I go up 1.6 like this. So here, this would be 1 to 1.6. Yeah, it's like a triangle. Look, I got like this ink to shape function on and it's like, damn, it makes my drawings look like I'm a baller. You know what I'm saying? Damn, dude. All right. And so that that is is like this slope. That tells me the slope. And so how why is that important here? Well, shoot. Look it. If I take the tangent line and I increase this dot like this right here, then I know the slope here, that angle right there is also theta. This angle is also theta right there. And so, shoot, if I go back and I look here then, that means this is theta right there. Yes, yes, and I can just use my understanding of geometry and say theta is tan inverse, the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. And if my, as long as your calculator is in degree mode, shoot, you will get that theta is equal to 58 degrees like this. Yes. So we know theta. All right. That is a preliminary result that is useful to us. And now I can, I can reward myself with a check mark because I love check marks. Yes. And check. Yes. All right. All right. The other geometry is the radius of curvature of the path. So here, for the radius of curvature, the radius of curvature of the path, you know, that's we're just going to use this equation, sh equation for the radius of curvature given the function of the path. And that's usually on the inside cover of your textbook or in a calculus book. It's easy to find. It's rho is 1 plus the derivative dy dx squared to the 3 halves divided by the absolute value d2y of the second derivative with respect to x. Boom, like this. And just make sure it's an absolute value. That's like, uh, that's a very common mistake for people to forget that it's an absolute value in the denominator. All right. And so now, now, now I'm ready right here. You know what I'm saying? Like this is one plus, I already did, I already found the derivative. It's 0.8x, 0.8x squared to the three halves like this. And the second derivative, d2y dx squared is, well, the second derivative of 0.8x is just 0.8. So that's a, that's, that's a no brainer, right? So here's 0.8. I'll put the absolute values, although in this case, it's not a big deal. And if I evaluate all of this, at x equals 2 meters, well, shoot, all I got to do is plug in right here, x equals 2 meters. Hopefully, when you do your calculations, you'll get 8.40 meters like this. And this 
is the radius of curvature of my path. Yes, 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 yes. And so now I can go back here and reward myself. And I know a n shoot. I, in fact, I'll even calculate it right here real quick. This is I know the velocity at x equals two meters. Uh, at this instant, at x equals 2 meters is 5 meters per second squared over the row, which would be 8.4 meters like that. Yes. And so, you know what? I'm going to reward myself. You know what I'm saying? You got to treat yourself, right? And I'm going to treat myself with a check. And what does that leave me? Once I work out the geometry, it leaves me with two equations and two unknowns. All right. I, got, I can pick and choose which one I want to solve for. And in fact, they're independent equations. So using equation number one, right, I can go ahead and solve for, so I'm going to solve, all right, from one, which is that sum of the forces in the n direction right here. So from one, I can solve for nb directly, right? And so here, nb is equal to m a n plus m g cosine theta and you know let me just plug and chug will be when i work out some numbers hopefully i'm right you double check me 81.75 newtons n sub b like this so that is my answer for the normal force acting on the particle from the path all right, so from now, from equation two, what I want to do is determine the acceleration in the tangential direction at this instant. And really, I need that because I, the question asks for the total acceleration, and that total acceleration is equal to, or the magnitude of that acceleration, is the square root of some squares of an squared plus at squared. And I already have an squared. And, um, and so now I just need to get at from that second equation. And when I look at equation two, this is just m times g sine theta is equal to mat. The masses cancel. And this tells me that at is just g sine theta. And at this instant, because I know the angle, I know the angle at this instant, I just got to plug and chug the angle. So this is just 9.81 meters per second squared times the sine of 58 degrees. And this is 8.319 meters per second squared. And this is at x equals, and just to make sure this is clear, this is at x, this is specifically at x equals two meters. And so I can answer the magnitude of acceleration. All I gotta do is now just straight plug and chug the square root of a n squared, a n was, which is 2.98 meters per second squared. And so if I plug in and chug that, 2.98 squared plus a t, which is 8.32 squared. And I take the square root of that. And a is the magnitude of the acceleration I get is 8.84 meters per second squared. And that is the acceleration of my box the magnitude at least. All right, so hopefully that was a useful example. If you can establish and draw that free body diagram and write the equations of motion, really the challenging part could just be the geometry. If you've been watching this video all the way, I hope that you will subscribe and like this video and take it easy. Start to free.